언제나 함께 있었음해 모든 게다 통하니까 Feels like daydream에 너와 있을 땐난 I love my life 사라지지만 나의 전부 The chemistry is like no other two 힘들었을 때마다 늘 함께 했던 너 yeah. 눈이 마주쳤던 그 순간 생각을 공유해 우리 둘 사이에 텔레파시 Expedition Seniors. As you can see from this amazing footage, it was an A plus bluebird day. Calm, calm, calm. And everyone was happy. This is what we had dreamt of when we were planning our trip to the Bahamas. But in the winter, Mother Nature often cranks up the wind and weather. Calm days are few and far between. So sit back and relax as we share some banner days traveling through the Exuma chain of islands in the Bahamas. Oh, boy, you're you're all ahead of you over there. Well, that's chilling. I know. Oh, oh look at that too. Okay. Can you great. reach? Can you reach that? What kind of yeah. fish is that? Uh, it's a grunt. A different kind of grunt. Yeah, this is. You see the cut on the tail? You see this part oh, missing on there? Yes. Barracuda, barracuda tried get. There's a barracuda following you. Yeah, I bet he is. Trying to get your snapbacks. He tried to take it off, off my uh, spear. Spear here. Oh my goodness. The other one, the kudo has got the other one too. It's uh. Careful for the kudo. Yeah, better kudo than the sharks though. Yeah. Well, guess if there's hunting going on, they might come still. Yeah. Yeah. They might yet be here. The boys are in the water spear fishing, and it's the first really, really calm morning we have had on the whole trip. So that's exciting. But I barely slept last night, even though it was flat calm. I don't know, I just couldn't fall asleep. So the lazy part of me wants to sleep in the boat while the boys are out, but the other side of me, which is saying, are you nuts? You're out here in the middle of the ocean in the Bahamas. It's flat calm, get in the water. That part of me is the one that's motivating me to get my wetsuit on. I'll bring the camera and you can see what's going on. Try it, Eric. Just put it on the edge of the bucket and scrape it off. Atta boy. Way to go, Eric! Woo. First spearfish success. I thought they'd be bigger. Yeah, yeah but they, they do get bigger. They get like three times that size, but it's best just to remove them all from here, Eric, if you can. Yeah. Are you okay with doing that? Yeah. They're invasive? Or what are they? Oh. Poisonous? Lionfish are highly invasive. Yeah, they eat a lot of the small fish on the coral reefs that they've been. Florida especially has been really been pushing people to go out and kill as many as they can. Yeah, I remember hearing that. What do you, what do you have to say, Eric? Was it fun? Uh, fun. Yeah, it was fun. And that barracuda was just right next to me, and I didn't want to go down, but I'm like, you know what? Oh, uh, don't worry about it. Whatever. Him. Yeah, he's he's just gonna he's gonna keep about about eight feet from you the whole time. He knows what's the safe distance. Yeah. Okay. I'll go over Good with luck, you. Boys. Maybe Do you I'll, want to go, Jewel? Yeah, I'm going to come in in a minute. Okay, minute. I'll give you my spear gun if you want to no, go. No, I don't need to spear. I'll just watch. Okay. Our ankles are sore from yesterday. Uh, ah. Right. <laughs> We are really enjoying the morning that is almost
almost flat calm. One of the calmest mornings we've had so far. And I tell you, everybody says the water in the Bahamas is exceptional, but they're right. It is unbelievably beautiful and clear, like a swimming pool. So I, I have to agree with everything everyone has said, and I have to say it again, because it's breathtaking. at our destination and anchored up in a shallow bay. We were immediately greeted by two very friendly stingrays who swam around the boat and seemed genuinely inquisitive. In these moments, we feel that the ocean's inviting us in and we could float and observe these creatures for hours. Some fun facts about stingrays. They rely on their noses to find food. They belong to the same family as sharks. The main predators of stingrays are sharks. What does that say about cousins? That was a bit weird. Stingrays give birth to live offspring rather than laying eggs. Stingrays are born fully developed and with no bones in their bodies, only cartilage. Male stingrays court females and choose them by biting on their pectoral disc. 
The mating period lasts over six months until the female becomes pregnant. She can give birth to five to 15 young once a year. The young generally swim away as soon as they're born as a survival instinct. So I am guessing that these two rays may be a male and a female, the way that they were behaving with each other. Stingrays pose little threat to humans. They're highly intelligent and shy in nature, and they tend to avoid contact while they are acting playfully. And at times, they can turn aggressive. Remember, as always, they are wild creatures and they have a venom-filled tail for defense. This venom is harmful, but is fatal only when directly stabbed into the heart or the abdomen. After the rays moved on, Eric decided to practice his spear pole fishing. Michael rigged up a target for him with an empty Coke bottle, kept in place with a small rope and a dive weight. Like anything new, it takes repetition to really get the feel for the mechanism and to increase your accuracy when you fish. After target practice, we decided to head out to the reef and put the skills to the test. Spear pole's ready to go snorkel some coral heads or some reefs. Yeah, we're going to try to go on the outside today. There's two uh, on the ocean side, see if we can get some fish out there. And Eric just was just practicing his spear fishing technique on a Coke bottle filled with some, well, just with a weight on the bottom, wasn't it? Yeah, he, was, uh, and he finally did manage to jump through the Coke bottle. We'll be having. We're, ha we're having Coke bottle for dinner. Mm -hmm. Provider. He's quite a provider. Yeah. We got a nice marguerite. I think that's what this one is. It's a beautiful fish. And then we have, uh, I think it's a schoolmaster snapper right there. Beautiful. Look at the fangs on him. Man, you do not want to get your finger in that guy. Oh, that was a lot of work to get this one. But I mean, he's got a really nice hogfish, which is, which are excellent eating too. So I'm looking forward to having uh, this one. Actually, it's a, only the second hogfish I've eaten. So this is, uh, this is a, we have enough fish here now for probably three nights, uh, two nights anyway. So we're good. We got enough protein for probably for for a few days anyway. So excellent. Well done. Yeah. Thanks, honey, for for going out with me. You're welcome. Alrighty, what is for dinner? Well, I'm making a big vat of potato salad. I'm cooking it out here because it gets so hot in the galley. So it's going to be potato salad for dinner and then maybe potato salad for lunch. 
for breakfast or whenever we like. <laughs> so what's the plan? Uh, we are gonna go for a walk. There's a trail over there. And we're gonna go see where it takes us. So something about a lake trail, I don't know. But we're gonna go have a look at that. I feel so good today. I got freshly shaven. I'm clean. Got bug bitten like you wouldn't believe. It's really hard to get rid of the no see here. But it's, it's another day and it's gorgeous. There's a light breeze today, which is nice. Hopefully it'll keep the bug away from us. We are certainly suckers for punishment. The no see were relatively brutal last night. And uh, so instead of going further out so that there's more wind, Mike and I have decided to go for a walk inland because there's a trail that looks interesting on the shore. We're not sure how much longer we'll be at this anchorage. So we are up early and we're going to go for a hike and I'm in my fully geeked out uh, fishing gear, long pants, long shirt and buff and hat just in case the bugs are really bad in there then they'll have less surface area to uh, attack. So that's the plan. Ready to roll. Let's get out of here. Well, we don't have far to go. Literally a minute to the shore. Pull up my pants because I'll probably get wet. It's obviously a little, a very well-known little trail because it has a name and it has boys marking it. You know, I, I don't think it's really well known because it's not in any of the cruising books. That's true. And, that is true. and it's, I've never seen this mentioned before, so I don't think it's so well known. Do you want to just drop the anchor? And we're not out, in or? such a well known area, really. I mean, this is not typically staying here. Is, is, no. This is not where the It's too shallow for, uh, for, for the bigger boats to stay here. Well, if you look over there and you see where the boat is anchored, it's just us. Yeah. And there's the odd catamaran that comes in here. One of the several, but basically that's all we've seen is one other boat. Yeah. So for a lot of people, they stick to the, um, I think to, they stick to the deeper oh, anchorages yeah. and the ones that are better known just to be safe. So well, maybe we're got, stupid. We've only, got, we've only got two feet of water on our, on low tide, we've only got two feet of water on our deal. Yeah. So that's not very much. And a sailboat with a monohull would definitely not want to get in here. And most, most catamarans wouldn't want to get in here either. Just getting in here is the hard part. It's not really, it's not really the, um, the once you get in here, it's kind of deep, but the passage to get in here is really shallow. You know, you've only got a couple of feet underneath your keel at high tide. So it's, uh, it's, it's tight. I mean, when we leave, I want to leave on a high tide and we just have a little boat that doesn't draw very much. So here's the trailhead marker. I was wondering if, if there was a lake in here. When I looked on the map, it looks like there's an, an interior lake way down there, but not here. So this will be um, this will be an interesting little expedition, little adventure. We love those. It's not much of a trail. Now yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, this is, looks trailish. Does it? Yeah. It does. Well, maybe this is the reason why it's not been publicized because it's not really. A well, it'll be interesting. Look out for. Look out for scary snakes and things that freak me out. That's why I wanted Michael to go for it. Oh look! It actually has a little thing. It says lake that way and views that way. Oh my goodness. So which one do we go to? Wow. I don't know. Your choice. Do you want to go to the lake or you want to go to the view? I have no clue. We can do both. Let's start with the lake. I'm still perplexed because on the map we did not see a lake. Isn't this exciting? Yeah, kind of. A little bit? Yeah. yeah, but which way? Oh, it looks straight. Does that look like you can walk right through? Yeah, that's a trail. I think it is. I don't think this can get very much. Oh. What? There's something there. Or maybe not. Well, with, when you look at these grasses, it definitely would indicate, this vegetation would indicate. Yeah. Be careful where you step. Yeah, no kidding. Go, go!
Ah, what? Nothing. Jeez, don't do that. <laughs> Maybe it used to be a lake. Yeah, that makes sense. I kind of feel like I'd like you to go through it and then come back and tell me it's safe. I sound like such a little chicken. Oh, that's a, you're not a chicken. No, that's fine, Joel. Maybe this, you're right. I think this is what it used to be a lake. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else here. I think this is the end of the trail. I mean, look at this. This is totally different vegetation here. I think this is what they used to call the lake. Yeah. Or what is considered the lake. And it still feels actually under the foot. It still feels pretty spongy. Uh, yeah, and it's moist. It's almost like it's moist. So I don't know. Maybe, one, maybe it, it all, all the, all, maybe all the water gathers here. I don't think it could be, but yeah. it's a drainage, a spot for drainage for the island. Yeah. Because we did look. When you look over there, there's a hill that goes this higher elevation. Yeah. All around us. Basically. All around us. Yeah. yeah. We're sitting so, in a valley right here. Right. This and we did good. walk down a hill to get here, so. Well, let's let's, let's go. go this let's way. go to the views way. You want to go that way? Yeah. Well, interesting, but a little bit of a letdown. I was in my mind. I was thinking blue hole. You know, yeah. I was thinking yeah. somewhere. Well, I think this is the reason why this is not publicized. This trip <laughs> is because it's really not much. Not much here. It's not really a lake. But it's sure. I think at one time it might have been. Oh yeah, here comes the view. Oh, this is cool. Oh, look at that. There's their boat. There's sea nymphs sitting down there. Pretty as a picture, wow. Look at that. Oh, what a great spot. It was a short hike, but it's got a beautiful little vista up here. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, beautiful start to the day. Yeah. And now maybe a swim. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see the boat behind us, but it's right there. Uh, the boat's be. right there, and there's a huge ray, huge manta ray swimming. I don't think it's right. a manta ray, I think it's oh. a stingray. There's a huge stingray <laughs> swimming right along the shoreline. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get down to the water and swim with it. Yeah. But yeah, it's gigantic. Yeah, it's, it it's, is a big it's one. It's the size of a tabletop. It is. I don't know if you can see that from here. You probably can't. This water is the perfect temperature. I think a swim is in order. Maybe go explore the beach up here and bring our suits and go for a swim. shallow. I mean, there was a sailboat there and us, and uh, I don't know, that sailboat must have had a, a centerboard because otherwise he shouldn't have been able to get in there. Um, we had roughly at height, at low tide, I think we had two or three feet underneath the keel. So it was, it was, it was, it was snug, but it was so beautiful. And then the wind came up last night. We were planning on doing a uh, another uh, spearfish trip and possibly going down to Rudder Cut and Musha uh, in the dinghy and, and seeing if we could find the mermaid and the piano, but uh, it just, Eric wants to go bone fishing again, so we decided we'll do that. We have to get him to the airport in five, six days from now, so it's important that we see if we can help him get this uh, bone fish before he leaves. So we're heading to Great Exuma. We've got about 15 miles to go today. We've got about 15 knot winds, and we're crossing a, uh, a flat that is shallow. 
most, a lot of people wouldn't consider going across this, but we've been going across quite a few of these flats. And we look as far up as we can, we don't see any big dark patches. So it's, it's roughly the same depth, it's about 4.2 feet across underneath our keel. And we do have a dropping tide now, but uh, even at a low tide we should be able to get across here. But we're almost across the flat now. Um, we're actually going to hit a small section we're going to have even even less than four feet underneath our keel. But if we get across this, this is going to save us probably an hour and a half. So uh, this is because we were planning on going on the outside, but the uh, the winds are just too the waves are too big. We had a look there. We saw like a 56 foot, uh, 50 to 60 foot um, uh, trawler. He was coming in from outside of there. And he's kind of, he's he followed us for a little bit through the cut. And uh, he's obviously decided not to go down to Lee Stocking and come in. He decided to come in on this cut because there just really is no choice. It's just too rough out there. The 15 knot winds overnight, it's, those seas have probably built to about a meter and a half at least. And they were breaking out there. It was, it was, it would have been a rough trip if we tried that. As always, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. And maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Have a great day.